Hi, I'm Charlie Collins, and this is the Donegal Sport Hub Donegal Daily Championship Podcast. And you're welcome once again to our podcast here on Donegal Daily, Donegal Sport Hub. We're looking back over the weekend's action and we'll look forward to next weekend's action as well. Joined as usual by John Harn and Danny O'Donnell. And delighted to say that we're joined by my former colleague here on Donegal Daily and Donegal Sport Hub, Chris McNulty, who's gone on to better things according to himself. Uh, we're not quite sure about that. But Chris, great to have you back in studio. Thanks for coming in. John, we're going to start with the Senior Championship, uh, the Big Four. We talked a lot about it last week. Uh, two of them convincing winners, you'd have to say Kilcar and St. Eunan's. Neve Connell in the end, a six-point victory over Glen Sully. Most people would agree it wasn't a six-point game. And Gidor, not for the first time this season, just squeezing through this time against Arua. No major surprises, obviously, there. But uh, have we found out anything more than we already knew or thought after the weekend's quarterfinals? Probably the one thing we might have found out Cherry is it, it might be St. Junon's one and two with Kilcar, give or take who's one who's two they're, they're maybe closely matched Neve Connell probably third and Gidor have stepped back to fourth now Gidor Cherry are carrying a lot of injuries and a lot of new players and they're missing a lot of, a lot of their players that were there when they won the Ulster Club Championship who aren't old players but just for one reason or another aren't there immigration boys not playing injuries or McNeidus you know, quality players like that so maybe it's a, it's a false enough reflection on where Gidor are at, are at but that's where they're at that's yeah. football that's life that's the development of a team that's where you, where, they, where, where, where they've ended up uh, but they're still a competitive team and they still probably had too much for Bally Shannon Bally Shannon on all reports were very negative and maybe got what they deserved, Charlie, without going, you know, when it was there, to play a Gidor team that was so under strength compared to other Gidor teams that last few years, yeah. that was their chance, and they didn't take it, and didn't from, I wasn't at the game, Charlie, but from reports, didn't go for the juggler, you know. Well, maybe he went for the juggler at the end when he should have put it over the bar and brought it yeah. to extra time, but, you know, maybe too defensive for too long in the game. So I don't think we've l- learnt anything, Cherry Barrett, St. Julian's and Kilcar are two very good teams. Neve Connell are still there, Charlie, we've seen them yesterday when it was put up to them at half time, when they were behind, they came out with a very strong performance in the second half and got the job done and got a job, you know, convincingly enough in the end, but I know what you're saying, it was a tight match for a long period periods of the game against Willie. You know, give it everything, Cherry, and you admire them for that there. So uh, the big four is still there, Cherry, but maybe the gap is closing on some of the teams outside the big four. But are any of them other teams, Cherry, going to come through and, and pop us in Julian's or Kilcar or Glenthys at the minute or in the next two or three years? You can't see it. Unlikely. Danny, uh, Kilcar won in comfortably enough in the end against Kelly Bay St. Eunan's very comfortably, of course, against against St. Michael's. John says they're, they're one and two. Is that something you'd agree with? Yeah, you'd have to agree with that, Charlie, based on what we've seen all season. Um, it's very hard to judge Kilcar and St. Eunan's at the minute, if we're being honest, because neither of them have really been given any stern <coughs> test yeah. based on the opposition they've faced. And that's not their fault. They can only beat what's in front of them. But what they ha- what they have done is they've been ruthless in how they put those teams away, particularly St. Eunan's, probably more than Kilcar. Now, Kilcar by, were seemingly by far the better team. I didn't see the game between themselves and Killie Beggs. Mm. Um, 114 to 17 on paper doesn't sound like a convincing win, although going by reports, it seems that they should have won it more comfortably than that. Yeah. Whereas St. Eunan's are doing it the other way. They're putting teams to bed ruthlessly and probably with a strong bench and they're able to mix and match things a wee bit more. Um, but going into last, week games, last weekend's games Charlie I, we spent some work here last week my focus was more on the other four teams to see I remember saying last week if they have a cut at these big teams yeah. is there something they can then build on over the winter going into next season and I think Glenn Swilly can you know I think Glenn Swilly have something they can hold on to now because their performance yesterday was probably better than I thought it would be I thought they really got stuck into Nick Connell they cleaned them out on the midfield battle for yeah. the first particularly in the first half and they forced Nick Connell into raising their game in the second half which we know they're capable of doing so Glenn Swilly with the age profile they have and with Michael Murphy stationed at the edge of the square they are not going to go away next season they'll come back them younger lads will be a year more experienced so they're they're probably going to come back Irua based on their performance this season will probably feel they have something to build on but I agree with John Guidor with the team they had out was that a chance for Irua was mm. that a chance mm. missed to go at Guidor rather than play as defensively as they did now They'll argue that they nearly nicked the result, but they didn't get the result. Gidor in the semi final. St. Michael's, poor day in the Not office. at the races. Not at the races. No. Not at St. Eunice's level. No. Not at St. Eunice's level. So, where do they go from here? And the fourth team, Killy Beggs, probably come out of it reasonably happy that they, they competed to a point. So, 
Um, retained Division 1 football and, yeah, and being this Willie and, and yeah. got their quarter final of the championship yeah. so they, they'll year. probably feel over the winter that they can they can build on something so look the top four are the top four but I think I agree with John I think it's Unions 1-2 you can split hairs on who's 1 and who's 2 with Kilcar uh, Neil Connell are 3 and good over 4 at this yeah. Yeah. Chris in the O'Donnell Park Glen Swilly always brings something to a championship game you have to hand it to them you know because the resources are sh- are small in terms of the other teams, say St. Eunice particularly, and Neve Connell when you look at the respective benches. Keelan Kelly was a big, big loss to them before the start of the game yesterday. But will they be feeling they left it behind them, Chris? Because they kicked eight wides in the first half, three or four into the goalkeeper's hands. Stephen McGrath made an incredible save from Michael Murphy early in the game. They, they could have been, I'll not say out of sight, but they could have been in a very commanding position at half time. Yeah, they could actually have been out of sight. Like, if you look, even 17 minutes gone in the game yesterday, they were 3 2 up. At 0 0, Stephen McGrath had a, a wonder save from, from Michael Murphy. I mean, it, probably every one of us that was there expected it to go into the back of the net. And yeah. Stevens threw himself out full length to his right and beat it away. In that first 17 minutes, Glenn Swilly had six wides on top of that. So, if you had put in the goal plus even a couple of those points, I mean, it would have been very, very, very hard. As it was even at 6-4, it was hard enough for Neve Connolly to win it. I mean, the six-point one, I think we all agree, probably flattered Neve Connolly a good bit. I mean, there's no way that was a six-point game yesterday. Um, Glenn Sully definitely will feel that they left it behind them because they were in such a commanding position at half t- at half time, even though they had only a two-point lead. Uh, and probably... <clears throat> If you were going into one of the two dressing rooms yesterday, you, you know, you would probably have been happier actually going into the Neve Connell dressing room because the thing probably couldn't have gone any worse in terms of how the game and you were still firmly in it. And yeah. like within 65 seconds of, of the throw in the second half, the game had flipped on its head. And at that point, probably, you know, although to be fair, Glenn Swilly didn't show it because they came back, they missed a chance to draw level 11 minutes from the end. And within five minutes of that, there were five behind. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So definitely Charlie Glenswilly will have gone away from that yesterday with a huge, huge amount of regret. Yeah. There were moments in the game, Charlie, that had slipped away from them. Yeah. See, see the time that Copper had the chance with them 6-2 up? Yes. Oshin Crawford was in one-on-one on McGrath. Had he seen him and slipped him in? Yeah. And even, I think, Nick Connell's first or second goal, they kicked the ball out over the sideline, which led to the point That's right. at the start of the second mm-hmm. half. Yeah. Then the goal came off that kick out. So, <clears throat> and then even the time they had the mark to go level with 11 minutes to go, that was a That's chance right. to level the game up. Yeah. And then you could sense it in the stand that the mm-hmm. Glenswilly support were yeah. right behind them. Because they'd come back from that terrible start to the yeah. second half to get yeah. back really back, back into the game. You know, you know? Look, I, I had admiration for the young players. Jack Gallagher, Keenan Dunleavy, Kevin yeah. Marley, um, young Kelly young, even young uh, Wogan big lad middle of field uh, threw yeah. himself about Marley there, but had a good game. they cleaned them on kickers yeah. John that uh, first half oh they did uh, big play play that, and, and, and uh, Neve Collar susceptible to that mm. pressure on the uh, on the kick out pushing up going at them and uh, Glenn Swilly identified that early on and, and went at them uh, what I liked about Glenn Swilly Charlie was they played with a bit of abandonment yeah. they weren't one of these teams that was over coached you know, you think yeah. that no one's going to shoot only Murphy, give it to Murphy. I know they kicked wide and very frustrating, but in one way it was great to see. They took on the responsibility, young players, had a shot, missed it, uh, kept going, kept playing. It wasn't all about Murphy. I was very impressed with them, Charlie. I, I, I liked, you know, the honesty that they brought to the game. Mm. There were two incidents in the second half, one on the far side where I think the cornerback, might have been Rory Crawford, gave a brilliant kick pass up the sideline, took two of these men out of it. You know, we don't see enough of that, Jerry. Then uh, Cormac Callaghan did the same thing on mm. the stand. He gave a, he drove a big ball out over three Glantis men onto, in front of the maybe Dunleavy to attack. You know, and you could hear the crowd going, wow, because we don't see enough of that. No. You know, they took risks, Cherry, they went at it and it was good to see and, you know, they died with their boots on, which is all you can ask of a team. And as Danny said, I thought young Jack Gallagher was immense. For a, young, for a young player, Cherry, to look for the ball, get breaks, wanting to get on the ball, drive him forward. Talk about leadership for a young player. I was very, very impressed with him, Cherry. But at the same time, Neve Connell had all the answers when it was put to them. And you have to admire them. And, and that's what they do, Charlie. You know, Ethan O'Donnell with a couple of bursts from the half back line, broke a couple of tackles. And once you could see him breaking the line, they all tuned danger in. Danger then. Danger, yeah. danger. And they would a fuck, couple of slip, quick hands through the hands just a palm into the back of the net. You know, very, yeah. very slick, Charlie. So, uh, as the man says, they haven't gone away. You know, they have the experience. They have plenty of good players. They're a year older, Charlie. That's the only thing. You know, a lot of the older players are a year older and it's just at that high level now that St. Eunans or Kilcar are going to bring to a final, whether it's Neve Connell or Gidor. You know, people will be saying that whoever wants the Kilcar 
St. Union's game is going to be favourites. Hot favourites. You know, and yeah. can can Neve Connell get, you know, but then a final, Charlie, if they're there, you know, they're going to be hard to beat again. Yeah. The only thing, Charlie, about those, you know, you, you talk about Glenn Swilly yesterday leaving with a lot of regret and probably the same with Arua. I said something similar coming up to when McCool's went down to play Gidor in the group stages that it was a chance now for McCool's because they've been a common team and a common club over the last couple of years mm. a chance to go and maybe <coughs> set down a wee marker get a good result and sort of go yeah we can compete Gidor won that game you, you know you look at those big t- the so called big four I mean this is now the, the the fourth time in five that, that the big four have been left standing in the semi-finals last year was the exception to that when Neve Connell beat Guidor yeah. you know where one took the, yeah, the, one the, took the, the other the out you know? last year yeah and yeah. you look I mean we've spoke for a long number of years about you know that we felt St Michael's were the fifth team and then we spoke maybe last year that Glen Finn were a common team and Bondorn were there now, at one stage you know but you look at those they've all fallen away you know, can mm. can he ruin now and can Glenn Swally maintain that sort of position in around the fifth and, and take advantage of one of those big four slip out of the big four? Mm. Who who comes up? Can can they be a big four or are they just going to be a number four? Yeah. Well, Cher- we're left. We're, sorry, John. Cherry, I think you know <coughs> it's been played out over and over again about the big four, big four. I think people are getting too caught up about it, you know, and too you know preoccupied by it, and it's the big four, the big four. I think, Cherry, if you go through the vast majority of counties club championships and ask a reporter like Chris in every county who's going to win the championship they'll give you three teams yeah mm-hmm. that's the that's, we're that's, no different anywhere that's else that's the reality yeah you know yeah. three te- now some Tyrone's different they have six or seven yeah you know but by that most counties there's two or three teams that are going to win the championship very mm-hmm. rare that's a team that's going to come from outside there now I don't know my stats on around the around the grounds or around the counties but you can be, I know Tour de Strata Steiger are going for six in a row Cora yeah. dominated Galway Cross McLean some counties are a wee bit more com- I don't know if you, say, if you want to say competitive but we have four teams Terry they've been there for four or five years that's that's not their problem Gidor no. won and off the club an elite team Neve Collin flying Kilcar flying St. Junos flying so if we have four teams that are very good well that's that's brilliant for Donegal Club Football and we shouldn't be saying you know, as Chris said, it's up to the other clubs. Shouldn't now. be a negative. It shouldn't really be a negative. Yeah. I know yeah. we make it sick of it yeah. that it's the same fixtures, but mm-hmm. you know, you want the best teams there, and the four best teams are there now. So embrace yeah, it. Embrace I it. always think that you know, you know, you can talk and you know about maybe what way the championship is structured and should we do this or should we do that. But ultimately, you do want two of your best teams to be contesting the final. You know, it's it's great when other teams and other clubs maybe get a chance someday, but, you know, that happened not so very long ago when we complained of, oh, that's going to be a one-sided final, so there's no point going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we're you hard can, to please in Donegal. We're very hard to please, you know, but no, yeah. I think, you know, you look at those big four and you look at Neve Connell yesterday. I mean, I seen them, Charlie, a few weeks ago against St. Michael's as well. And I said this to Danny one, one day after that. I was very impressed by how they won it impressively without actually being at, at top gear and they were almost the same yesterday you know you, you have to sort of hand it to them the way they were done at half time regrouped and you know they still won that game by six points yesterday without being anywhere near top gear yeah Danny we're left with the big four so yeah. there's, we, we have to accept that now and, and there's going to be this weekend the two semi-finals let's start we understand the, the St. Unans the Car one is going to be Saturday evening and the Guidor Leif Collin game is going to be Sunday let's start then on Saturday evening as John says, probably number one and two in terms of what they bring to it and their performances, and that's an epic game, really. St. Eunice and Kilcar. But what kind of a game do you expect from it? Oh, you would you would hope to see two teams rip into each other um, because they are the two probably the two best teams in the county at the minute. And <clears throat> I would say deep down, both of them would have preferred to get Guido or, and or Lee Connell. Yeah. And, now I'm not saying they would have won those games, but had they won them, they would then have that battle hardened. Tough game going into a final. Yeah. Both are coming in we would undercooked, I think, coming into the semi final. Um I think it'll be cagey, Charlie. I do. I think early doors, you're gonna find both teams will have huge respect for each other's forward lines. I can't see St. Unions leaving Paddy McBrady one on one. You know, they'll get bodies behind the ball as normal. Like Kilcar are doing that as well. It'll be a lot of counter attack football. It'll be a lot of it'll just come down to whatever team is good in possession of the ball, can move the ball around, can get their shooters on it. Um, tough defending. I hope it's I hope it's a battle, Charlie. I hope the two teams have a real cut at each other because, on paper, they're the two best footballing teams in the county. Yeah. You know, the, the, do, do one of them have to decide that's what they're going to do and force the other to do it, Danny? Um, I don't know because if one does go defensive, Charlie, the other will mirror that. Because mm, if you yeah. and look, Sean, the, everything comes back to Sean Patton and the Union said it because mm. if Kilcar, what you want probably Kilcar to do or any other t- team to do is to push up 
on the opposition kickout. But with Sean Patton being the goalkeeper, that's a dangerous tactic because Sean Patton can He'll bypass you. He can bypass you. He can pick out players. And with the Sununas running game, the one thing Kilcar won't want is that direct quick ball to midfield and offload. And next thing, they're right at the heart of your defence. So I can't see Kilcar pushing right up aggressively on, on the kickout. I think they'll probably drop off, let Sean Patton go to his half back line. And then they look to be solid and break themselves on the counter attack. Well, yeah. if, if that's the case, Danny, you know what to expect. It's, it's going to be cagey. It's, it's going to be cagey. Yeah. If, if Kilcar drop off Sean Patton, Sean Patton kicks it to a corner back who's free <coughs> and he strolls out, well, it might mm. say stroll, but he'll go out so far. Mm. It's Kilcar, long way to the other end of the Kilcar field. Kilcar yeah, might leave Paddy yeah. up and someone else. They probably won't go 15 behind the ball. But if they're 13 behind the ball, you know, St. Juniors are going to meet that wall. Mm. And then it's over and back, and it's over and back. And St. Juniors will go over and back, Charlie. We've seen them do it last oh, year yeah. long enough. Yeah, and they yeah. did it in the county yeah. final. Yeah. And they'll yeah. have no pop. So <laughs> it mightn't be the classic that we're hoping for. I hope it is a classic. But it, it, th- pro- it uh, probably would need St. Juniors to go ahead in the game yeah. and to draw Kilcar out, right, possibly. Right, yeah. But St. Juniors will definitely press the Kilcar kick out. Yeah. yeah. And St. Juniors have the most aggressive press out. Pre- Press on a kickout you'll see in, in club football. They are really aggressive with the kickout, so they will say to Kilcar, "You send it out the middle of the field. We're going to have bodies around that. We'll want it. We'll run at you." So, a lot will depend on how both teams approach the kickout scenario. But um, I think for a spectacle, you probably need um, St. Eunice maybe get two or three points up early, to force Kilcar to come out a wee bit more to re- get Ray McHugh on the ball, get their runners on the ball because they have oh, yeah. serious players yeah. in transition. So. But we saw this last year with St. Eunans. If they play it the way they played against the Connell final, they won't take contact. They'll keep the ball around the, the, around the, the fringes. Right. They'll get Niall O'Donnell on it. They'll get Shane O'Donnell on it. And they'll wait. They'll come back out again. They'll hold they'll it. They'll wait for that space it. to open. They'll wait. They won't, they mm. won't panic. Um, but if Eunans are sloppy and take ball into contact, Kilcar will murder them mm. on the counter-attack. Yeah. And, so and it's quite tactical. Like. And we've seen bits of that in the first 20 minutes since Eunans, I thought, against St. Michael's where we lost ball in contact and the attack in third. You know, mm. I thought they were sloppy at times, Charlie. You yeah. know, yeah. just they weren't as slick. But now, overall, this season, Charlie, St. Eunans are a lot slicker in their attack and play. They're a lot faster in their attack and play. They're not as over and back. Yeah, but nobody's laid a hand on them. No, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. The biggest challenge that's for them. Yeah, that, that's yeah. the problem all year. Everything's yeah. great, as I said last week, until you get a slap in the mouth. Yeah. You know, everyone has a plan. We're going to do this. And next thing, you're three <laughs> points behind, and Paddy McBurdy's having the game of his life, and Ryan McHugh's flying, f- flying and Kieran yeah. McGinley's <clears throat> one ball in midfield, where St. Junior's have dominated all mm. year, and, and 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 things are, you know, and maybe they push up in Sean Patton's kickouts, and well, one or two goes three. So they've got Campbell in their midfield, six foot seven, big lad, and they've Kieran McGinley, and they'll have Ray McHugh and breaking ball. They'll have plenty. Like, I'm yeah. not saying they won't. But if they, if they, if they do, it's a signal that they're going for the game. Well, that's it. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then St. Junior's are going to be tested, and Absolutely. then you're going to see what they're about. Yeah. Kilcar have so many pacey players, Chris. I mean, we we could name them all off here. There's seven or eight of them, and and if they have space ahead of them, they're going to attack that space. Is that the inherent danger for St. Junior's that's going to force them to play maybe the way the boys have suggested to be very cagey and set up defensively, not get in too much contact, but to block the road. You know, make sure the roads into their danger area are blocked. Absolutely. I mean, Danny mentioned it there about St. Eunans having a very aggressive press. The thing about, the thing about, I suppose, the, the St. Eunans thing with Sean Patton, I mean, we've seen it in Bal Buffet, but Donegal was it against Tyrone earlier this year where he's knocked the ball 80 yards into Patter Mogan's palm and mm. all of a sudden, within three seconds of a kick out, they were in and goal. I mean, Kilcar probably don't have that sort of strength in terms of their kick out, but what they do have is they have serious running power. I mean, you look, you look at the likes of Ryan, Owen McHugh, the likes of Daniel Lyons, Ryan McShane from cornerback scored five points in a game a couple of weeks ago against our draw. They Cornered have Arles. players yeah. that will seriously, you know, you look at Andrew McLean, mm. those type of players, they have so, so many of them who can hurt you. But the way St. Unans are, and, and you look at that St. Unans team, if you're playing against them, there's no weak links in it at all. No. You know, you even look at their bench, like Dar- Darren Mulgrew was probably one of their best players in the championship last year and he, he's been injured recently and, and is coming back. You look at them, Jordan O'Dowd has probably was an unheralded player, had a superb game at the weekend. They have so many parts to come in. Kieran Tobin, another guy, superb year last year and, and was on the bench on Saturday evening. They, they just have so many strings to their bow. St. Eunans can beat you with... By being patient, they'll throw the ball over and back for five or six minutes. Has happened in games this year in the league. We've seen it. Or if you let them play, they'll they'll beat you with a devastating attack. They they don't really mind how they beat you, but they're 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 one team probably capable 
of really doing anything and, and beating you any way that the game pans out. Yeah. Kilcow needs to be better on the pitch. They were, he would. I was going to say that to you, yeah. Danny, and I was also going to say to you then, okay, you're Conor Cunningham and, and his backroom team, and you're looking at the whole situation. You know, die with your boots on. And not you know not lose by four or five points without really giving it a big go. I mean, it's a it's a it's a conundrum really for him, hasn't it? It is, you know, because he has the talent to do it. Yeah, it is a conundrum. But like, I I watched Union say against the Meagles the last day. The one thing that Kilcar might look at with the St. Union style of play, St. Union's are quite quite happy to flood players up. They'll, they'll send everybody up the field. You'll hear them shout on the sideline. No need for bodies back there. Yeah. They might leave a plus one back in front of Paddy McBrady. Yeah, but apart from that, they'll all go up the field. Now Kilcar might be happy enough to see the likes of Keelan Ward or a Sean McVeigh or something like that, on the ball, on the fringes, and they'll put all their attention on Niall O'Donnell, Shane O'Donnell, Young McGee, and the shooters, the, the absolute mm. shooters that they have. Mm. So could, have Unions, if, if those players get tied up, do Unions have enough shooters outside of that three or four you know, to, to kick your nine or ten points? Kilcar might say, look, we don't think they'll kick that many points from them. Don't, those positions. Yes. Make sure Niall doesn't get on it, make sure Shane doesn't get on it. Um, Kieran Moore come from wing half forward so if they could tie up those kind of score getters Conor Duck another man that looked to tie up mm. but that's not a man that tie up yeah that's not a man that tie up that's a man that tie up that's, 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 yeah. that's the danger that's the thing. Yeah. Charlie it's very funny you know I think it's then it could be one year this weekend or last weekend when St. Judas played Kilcarra and Donald Park in the first round of the championship last year yeah uh, and St. Judas went down five points up at half time played brilliant probably could have been more up yeah. came out in the second half Cherry and collapsed and Kilcar took over and won the game yeah. convincingly well, Kilcar, five Kilcar in that game made a couple of very interesting I think Ryan McHugh was pushed further full up full the field of, you know. and they got a goal there in the second half yeah. and, and really that game turned around I in did, the very stages St. Junis remember we're coming off two years of not getting have been beaten by Neve Collins in semi-finals mm-hmm. without really landing the punch you know a fair enough a young team coming but hadn't proved anything Beaten by Kilcar at home in the championship, well beaten. So there was a lot of questions. And, you know, the beauty about that was it was the first game and Rory and David could rejig the thing and look at things and find out things about players. That hasn't happened this year. Now, mm. and saying that, Charlie, that St. Junior's team has progressed unbelievably since that game against Kilcar last year. Yeah. Won in the county championship. Monkey off their back. Playing this year a lot better, I feel, with a bigger swagger and a lot of more pace. The hurlers are out. A lot of things are coming together for Rory this year that is making them a better team so yeah. you know and the, the other point of that too Charlie is we always talk about Kilcar but the bottom line is they were wiped out against Neve Collin and O'Donnell oh, Park yeah, in the semi-final yeah, when yeah. it was put up with them again last year yeah. and the year before well Neve Connell wiped out Yador and Kilcar yeah. unbelievable I know they did that right. but you know unbelievable so, performances but well, there's pressure on Kilcar ah, absolutely. About that, like, Look, you know? Charlie, yeah. this is huge pressure Yeah, no point to say this otherwise no, so like a final is a final but a semi-final when you are the two big teams, yeah. as everybody considers them to the big two yeah. at the minute, meeting in the semi final, and the winner, the loser is gone yeah. this weekend. It's a pressure game, and yeah. look, under pressure, you need big players to step up. And look, Kilcar will look to Paddy McBrady. The problem for Unions is the man marker that normally taken was Conor Morrison. Mm-hmm. Now, Conor Morrison, in mm. fairness to him, has gone so back on the back at training, yeah. back on the team. But is he ready to go on I that challenge? Think, probably not. So, so no. where do you go next? You're probably looking at Keelan Ward, Parkey, somebody like that, maybe yeah. Devine coming off the line. The other question I'd have about St. Eunice, based on what team selection they've had in the championship, there hasn't been a steady 15. No. Because of the strength mm-hmm. of their squad, they've yeah. been able to mix and match. Do they know their best 15 going into this game? Mm-hmm. That's why I said earlier, had they got, say, Guidor or Lee Connell in the semi and came through a tough game, mm-hmm. he would be more sure of his best of his players. Whereas yeah. this time, there is a wee bit of... But, I'm not saying guesswork for them, but they're not tested. Like Jordan O'Dowd's new to the team. Yeah. Kieran Moore's new to the team. They haven't tested that real heat yeah. of championship battle, which Kilcar will have to bring to beat them. And yeah. I think but, that's the key. They have to bring huge intensity to it. But what well, St. Junin's had on the flip side of that for us, or for St. Junin's, is that Kilcar haven't been tested either. either yeah. no, so, exactly. so we're both yeah. going into yeah. the same way. Yeah. Well, are they yeah. a more cohesive team all season, though, in the well, championship? I, I don't really know. One or two changes. Yeah. 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 Just well, finally, before we leave this, I mean, Kilcar, as I said, die with your boots on, have a go at it. You've got the talent in your team. Let's go out there, not you know, go back and through again on, on Saturday evening and thinking we left that behind us. What's what's the point in doing that like, you know? Yeah. I mean I suppose for Kilcar, yeah, you know, you, you have to kinda of die with the boots on and have no regrets and stuff, but at the same time, you're Connor Cunningham. You go out and you gotta go out whatever way you think is gonna win the football match. Mm-hmm. You know, if if you go out and have a goal and you lose it by seven or eight points or you lose it by one or two, you still lose the match. Mm. 
if he goes out on Saturday evening and makes it the ugliest evening in the world and wins the match, He'd nobody in Kilkiar and certainly Conor Cunningham won't care less. You know, that's that, that's the thing that, that Conor basically has to get ready. He, he has to get a victory. If Kilkiar fluke a victory by a point, well, whatever he's done he's worked. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Whether, whether or not it was right or wrong in the context of a game, if he gets a fluky last-minute goal and it turns the game on its head, it worked and that's sometimes these semi-finals can, can come down to it you know we've seen it so often in the past you know a team trailing high ball goes in guy gets a flick on it and, and then do you remember the year Kilcar went toe-to-toe with Neil Connell I do and they could see it five yeah. goals five goals semi-final yeah that's not going to happen they're not going to no. go completely toe-to-toe no. that day is gone as Chris says it's won at all costs of the weekend and I, I wonder in my head whoever loses it, who, who cannot afford to lose this weekend is the question. Well, Kilcarris and Juniors are cha- county champions. That's a young team. They've won championship already. Mm. Like if Kilcar So who's the bigger pressure on Kilcar? Absolutely. Right. One I word. Think, Chris, I think, uh, Chris, one I word. I think just, <laughs> just on that. John's even the pressure on Kilcar. <laughs> I, think, I think the pressure has to no be on Has there. to be on St. Juniors as the county. They are the county champions. Yes, yeah. And, you know, the, you know, John talked about coming there with two semi-final defeats and didn't lay a glove, I think. Them semi-finals <laughs> might have been closer. We've been closer than that, John. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't... I don't like, not, not last year against... I think Lenthys were on control for long periods of that game out in the Donald Park. I know the ball went in late at the end and they were scrapping for a goal, but they brought to bring Michael Higgerty on. He kicked, you know, they but should have brought played very well in those two matches last year against Kildare. This Kilkar. could go exit time. I mean, we this could go about penalties. It. Right, one word, Chris. <laughs> Unans, Kilkar. Kilkar. Danny. St. Unans. John. St. Unans. All right. Leif Connell versus Gidor. Neither set in the world of light, but as we made the point here last week about Neve Connell. They'd played teams that had all qualified for the quarterfinals. When it was put up to them yesterday, you could say they had a bit of fortune, but they came out showing intent in the second half. One misplaced pass by a Glen Swally defender. There's a point in the next thing Ethan O'Donnell decides I'm going to do something in this game. There's a goal goes in. But as we mentioned earlier, Glen Swally came back at them and got to within a point to them, you know, and, and had a couple of opportunities to equalise. So, Gidor, similarly, up in Glen Finn, just got through by a point. Same thing yesterday against De Rua, just got through by a point. So I'll yeah. start with you, Danny. I mean, who's Neve Connell favours going into this? Yeah, for me they are. But I think both will be absolutely delighted to have got the draw they've got because now they have an opportunity. Neve Connell going for their sixth final in a row, possibly. Yeah. Um, and this Gidor team, we talked about them last week, it's a new Gidor team. But a Gidor team with no pressure on them is a dangerous Gidor team. I know they stumbled across the line at the weekend against Eirua, but as Chris says, at this stage of the championship, it doesn't matter how you win, as long as you win. Mm. So they're in the they're in this county semi final now, probably underdogs. But you go back to that trilogy they had in two thousand nineteen, was it? Yeah, yeah. They're still going to carry that with them. I don't care how different a team they are. The key mm. players are still there. Eamon's mm. there. Neil, if he's, is hopefully he's fit after mm. picking up a knock. O McNeilis came on after twenty five minutes. Darrow Beale is there. They've plenty. Gary McFadden is there. Nile plenty. Fields back plenty Nile yeah. Fields. This mm. is no. They're not mugs. This is good old team, you know. And if you look at the O'Connell performance yesterday, and yeah, I agree. The second half, the I mean, that the intensity they brought in the first five minutes, second half was what we expected of them from the beginning. But you cannot ignore that they were cleaned out mm. for 20, 25 minutes on dirty breaking ball. Glenn Swilly won everything. Put huge pressure on Steve McGrath's kickouts, which did not work for them. The no. Neil Connell kickout was not good. No. So Gidor, with the big men that they have, will put massive pressure again on that kickout. They will push up. Definitely will push up. Because I watched them playing a couple of times this season. And under Trevor, it's all about getting the ball forward. They leave two, maybe three men up the field. So they will they won't sit back and be cagey. I can't see Gidor doing that. I think Gidor will go for Neil Connell, um, because it's a shot at nothing in one sense. Yeah. But then you, you go back to, and look at Neil Connell and you go. I mean, this team is a team that never stops. You know, yesterday you thought they're in big bother. They come out the start of the second half. They blow the swelly away for a couple of minutes. And there's nobody doing anything spectacular. You know, no. Leo picks up 1-1. He sits at the edge of the square, doesn't do a wild pile, but yet he's influential. Mm-hmm. It's Ethan O'Donnell, Jack McKelvey, the Doherty's. Again, nobody doing anything special. Well, Ethan O'Donnell was, was special, doing something uh, special. He was, yeah. good. He was good. But it's their, I mentioned last week, their conditioning. They were still going hard in the last two minutes, mm. you know, and they seem to play it away. But I've seen them in previous games where they suss you out in the first 15 20 minutes, they don't empty the tank, they see how the game's going, and then they press the button in the second half and they go for it. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be another intriguing semi final, you know. Yeah. It's tactically, um, will it be tactical? I don't know if it'll be tactical. They couldn't play the way they play, 
They leave one man, they leave Leo McLuhan inside and Charles McGuinness supports him. Mm. Everybody else plays behind the ball and they play the running game. That's their game. And they'll kick it inside if it's on. Tactically, I think Udor have to go for this. You know, I think they'll go for I think they will go for it. I think their mindset will be we have injuries, people have written us off, we're not meant to win the county title, we're in the county semi final, let's have a go at it. Yeah. Will that be will that be a good idea, Chris? Well, it has to like. If, I mean, if you're Guidor, you probably take a lot of heart out of Glenn Swilly's first half, and Glenn Swilly probably you probably take a lot of heart out of Glenn Swilly's whole performance yesterday. I mean, for Guidor, they're an hour away now from a county final, where they did get into the final. It's another couple of weeks to get bodies back and stuff like that. Um, Neve Connell, like they just keep amazing. You don't they with that sort of consistency that they have. I mean, they're in their ninth county semi final in a row. Like for for any group of players, like to to keep going and keep going on that, like they have, I suppose, a few kind of additions and a few um new players and young emerging players coming in. But by and large, that squad is as it was over the years. You know, there's been been very little change to it. A lot of people would probably say certain parts of it are an agent team. Yet they are, but there's no doubt when you put that unit as a unit, it's it's a formidable one. It's, it's a, a collective formidable for one. Yeah, it's a yeah. Collective. And as yeah. Danny said, like they don't have, you know, Ethan O'Donnell had a superb game on Sunday. Jack McKelvey had had big moments in the game and stuff. Leo does what what Leo does, but you sort of wouldn't go, you know, where you look at Glenn Swilly and think, you know, you automatically think Murphy. Mm. You mentioned Kilcarry, you automatically think Ryan and Paddy. Where Neve Connell, you probably don't have Keir, that. Kieran Thompson, but, uh, probably. Yeah, Kieran yeah, Thompson, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Standard yeah, player. The one thing I think maybe Neve Connell are probably missing is that just that potent forward that, that guarantees you the seven, eight points a game, you know, and, and a game that's going to be tight where he'll take you. Well, that was Ole McGarry again, yeah, and he's the, yeah, he's yeah, the big yeah, loss. He's, he's, the, big he's loss the star man. That, that, the, but they've nine, ten scorers yeah, yeah, in most yeah, games, yeah, you know, they've yeah. a huge so, scoring spread yeah, amongst John, what do you think? I think Trevor deserves a lot of credit for what he's done in Gidor under the circumstances of what he's been dealt this year with emigration, injuries, one thing or another. You know, I think he's, you know, you have to take your hat off to Trevor. He's, he's got the most out of them. Uh, I think to get them to a semi final, I suppose maybe Gidor would have expected to get to the semi final, but just with the hand he was dealt, it wasn't going to be straightforward. Mm. He's got them there now and he's going to have a chance. I think he'll have a go at it. I don't think it's in Gidor's nature to be too. Too negative, you know what I mean? And as Danny says, they have a shot to nothing. Uh, you know, they'll have a go. Glenties just have too many good players for me, Charlie. You know, mm. too too experienced. I know I'm saying they're, they're aging, but that comes with experience, obviously. But, you know, I still think... They still have a sprint of the young guys there. And, and, and yeah. Ethan O'Donnell and Jack McKelvin, they have enough legs where it matters to, to drive them up the field and, and, yeah. and get turnovers and put the press on and Kieran Thompson will freeze, Charles McGinnis will freeze. They rely a wee bit on freeze, Charlie. You know, yeah. seeing that yesterday, I think sometimes they kind of know that themselves and maybe they play for freeze. That That's the sign of it, an experienced team. They'll they'll take the ball off the shoulder, go into a tackle and, and maybe contact, hope, yeah. hope, hope that it's a high tackle or it's in the back or something. And they have Kieran Thompson on one side, Charles McGinnis on the other to put over the freeze. Uh, so, you know, get over need to watch that then. I think Neve Connell will just have too much no, for no, them. No, I'm looking forward to it. The Eamon McGee, Neil McGee, Owen Wade, <laughs> Anthony Thompson, the Warriors yeah. going right. to battle again. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be, a, I mean, if they get yeah. up close and personal, it could, it could be it's good. It's always good to be on the sideline when that happens. Ah, it's good it? to watch that. But <laughs> look, we didn't mention Orr McNeilis much. Yes. If Orr McNeilis is back to what Orr McNeilis is well, capable of, what he can do. then you could have a huge chance. But, that, but let's, be, let's be honest, you can't do that one week after coming back. That's, no, that's just the problem. No, no, we, no. we can say Orr McNeilis is there and he's going to be helped. The only thing is, when players come back now, there's some injury. They don't get on the field until so they're eight, they're yeah, yeah, and yeah. have had a couple of weeks training behind them. So, were yeah. they holding Owen back a wee bit? Well, yeah, maybe they were resting them and hoping that they would get that yeah. and not, yeah. not chancing them yeah. earlier on. What do you think, that? Danny? <sighs> Look, yeah, I, I've written Neve Connell off previous years, and then when I, when I kind of thought last year they'd won it, mm. the Unions took them. I just have a sneaky... F- Look, based on experience, based on everything else, you have to go for Neve Connell. But I just think... I just I know the Gidor lads, the mm. mentality they have... They'll get support behind them, and if if it's a if they're in with a chance and McNeilis is on the field, I I think they could I could they could nick it. But I'll, I'll go for the Connell. But I I think you are really really right. dangerous. Two and Neve Connell. Neve Connell for me as well. Just purely down to that experience. You know, you look at their big players like they presented Mary Boyle with a memento on Sunday for a hundred club Aye. championship yeah. games. You look at Leo Owen Wade, Anthony Thompson, Brandy McDyer. All of them are still so vital to them. You know, they were poor in the first half yesterday. A team like them and a squad like them in that dressing room, 
they won't make that same mistake again. They, they you know, or you you wouldn't imagine that they would. And for me, it's for me, it's and, and also they feel they underperformed <laughs> in the county <laughs> final last year. Yeah, so they want to get back if, to that. If Gidor Day McCollum of the Nisha Whale, if yeah. they had uh, Michal Carroll. Mm. Name me, there's probably say or two or three. Mulligan, could be Mulligan, Mulligan, you know, yeah, so yeah. that's the problem I have with Gidor, Terry. It's not yeah, that I don't fancy him. I think, if, I think if, if if Gidor, John, at, you touched on it, like I think they'd only six at the weekend of that team yeah, that, yeah. that went to the Ulster. I mean, that's a mm-hmm. serious where, where you look, you know, we've spoken there about Dave Connell, the consistency of that's them, right. and look at that turnover that but, Gidor have but had. But if Gidor take an example of Jack Gallagher and young yeah. Callahan, yeah. They, if they're young players. Decide. I'm just going to rip into this game. Mm-hmm. I have nothing to lose. My first. They they have not played in the county final. Them young lads. No. So they're no. going to have huge hunger. And when you've got Neil McGee and Neil McGee in your dressing room talking to you at training about county final day performance, semi final, we'll get that big day out. That's a big card for any player. So I'm looking forward to that game. I think it's going to be. That's going to be a, going to be a good game, Charlie. Looking forward to it. So we think it's going to be St. Eunan's Neil Connell final. We shall see. We'll know next week, right? That's just the senior B, the semi final line up there is Gidor against St. Eunan's and Glenn Finn against Neve Connell. So, three out of those four teams are in the B semi final as well. And uh, the relegation playoffs are on next week uh, Bondorn against Milford and Ardra against St. Nalls. The losers of those will play off then, and the losers of that will go back into intermediate football. Intermediate Championship semi finals. Uh, Danny, you were on commentary for the Neve Columba fan at Gales. 4 11 to 2 9. Looks like a very convincing victory, was it? Uh, in general, it was. Um, the better team won. There's no doubt about that. Now, having said that, Fanon started the game really well, led 4-1, um, had big Michael Sweeney at the edge of the square and put in at least 10 balls into him in that period. And he was causing a lot of danger in there. There was a key moment that swung the game in the Columbus' favour. The score was 5-5 in the last minute of the first half. Fanon were on the counter-attack, had a 2-1 situation and the balls played into, I think it was Darren McIlwain, just sl- that either bounced awkwardly on him or whatever and Instead of just taking around the keeper and burying it, go three points up. They lost control of that ball, went up the other end of the field, and the Columba won a penalty. So the Columba then buried, take the penalty. Six point turnaround. Yeah, and finally get a point back. It's a two point game at half time. But in the second half, the Columba upped it in terms of their forwards, really stood up. Aaron Doherty, Ryan Gillespie, Kevin McNairn scored 2 2. Um, their midfielders were strong. Fan had battled away. They got two goals in two minutes later on to kind of bring it back to a four point game again. But the Columba botched maybe three or four other goal chances before they buried the third and the fourth. Yeah. So deserved winners, Charlie, and they had to get back to that. They had to get to the final. Mm. John mm. mentioned it here last week that could they lose another semi final? They looked like a team last night that were never going to lose another semi final. They had that hunger about them. Yeah. Now Fanet did test them, and like Fanet were down a number of players through injury. Shimmy Nanny didn't start. Bernard McGettigan didn't start. They came on early in the second half, and they threw everything at it. You know, they didn't, they didn't stop trying the whole game. So it was a really good game of football, Charlie, to be honest. And uh, yeah. no, New Columba deserved the win. Learning from past mistakes, John, New Columba? I probably, Charlie, but they seem to have got the butt between their teeth this year, you know. And uh, I said, I didn't see them last night. I've seen a bit of it on, on the streaming. Uh, they look good, Charlie. I was impressed with them last week against uh, Boncrana and O'Donnell Park. I mm. thought for an intermediate team, their ball hand and their skill levels was very good. Good control on the ball. So they're obviously, Charlie, in the mood. Uh, they have the bit between their teeth and I think they're they're eyeing up this intermediate championship from way out. As I said earlier on this season that PJ McGinley was watching Malin and Downings in the league final in O'Donnell Park. Well that's on the evening and I was chatting to him and he says, you know, we're keeping an eye on everyone. So, you mm. know, they were they they were getting their house in order. So a lot of good players, Charlie. I wouldn't be familiar from that familiar with them by Aaron Doherty, but what I've seen in them in Donald Park last week, I was very impressed. And I wasn't surprised that they bet Fanet, to be honest. I knew Fanet would put it up them and give it everything, but I just thought they'd have too much glass for them. And that seems to be, you know, they, they, ran, they out. ran out well, winners in the end. Because this is a team that lost heavily down in Downings and, and were very poor that night down in Downings uh, that they were beaten. And suddenly now they've got this momentum to carry into the final with them. They've turned things around with victories over good teams because we know how competitive the Intermediate Championship is. Is it their year finally, do you think, at last? It probably would be too disrespectful to their opponents to finally say that you know that it's definitely their year, but it's there for them. There, there's no question that. I mean, I spoke to PJ McGinley last week, Charlie, after the Bunkrana game, and he made a point like they've been desperate now for so long to get back to the top table. I mean, they see themselves and, and they place themselves among the elite of Donegal football. I mean, they've been out of senior football now for maybe 
15 to 20 years, yeah. Charlie. Too long for a club like, you know, they do they do see themselves as one of the genuine big names in, in Donegal, you know, they had all those finals in the 1990s and stuff and all that period were one of the leading lights in Donegal and so many great players and all that and they still, they still hold on to a lot of that sort of history and PJ made the point that there's a lot of the players now have connections, you know, their sons or nephews of of players from, from, from that era and stuff and feels that it's sort of time for them to step up and now, this wasn't said to me, but I, I get a sort of feeling from Neve Clumba that, you know, they, they really want to get into senior football because, like, they're a rural club. Things aren't easy for them. They have a lot of players away from home and everywhere's a journey for them. And, you know, is there a fear there that if they, if they don't keep climbing the ladder that maybe it become harder to bring those players back on that yeah. promise that we're going somewhere every year and that if it, you know, doesn't happen, they come back. It doesn't happen again, they come back. You know, is, is there a wee danger there that you could lose them? So they're they're definitely desperate for it to be their year, Charlie. And like I seen them that day in Downings and it's it's nearly remarkable like watching them yeah, in the exactly. last couple of weeks yeah. that, than the that difference. day I saw them in You wouldn't give them a chance that day? Not yeah. a hope, Charlie. You would have just looked yeah. and said, you know, they were just, they looked completely disjointed. They were just... Yeah. You know that, that that was the word to describe them that day, but they've they've come back now and they they are a completely different animal. Yeah. Danny, you'd have seen them a lot with your association with Milford and and the <coughs> Borra at intermediate level as well. I mean, is this is this the best we've seen from them? Is this the best team? Yeah, this is the best. Yeah. yeah, because they played in the semi final last year against Dunlow, mm. and it was on Donald Park. And John, you said last week that they they had some kind of problem with the Donald Park didn't play well there yeah. but this team look different um, maybe it's the motivation maybe it's the new management maybe it's just the players themselves grasping it like they're old like Aaron Dorr is a year older he was in the county setup. Ryan Gillespie's a year older they were young players a couple of seasons mm. ago but yeah they look like a team like they set up again just the exact same way they did against Bunkrana they sat but 15 behind the ball for the first 10 minutes so they obviously yeah. set out not to concede early and then they, they hit you in the counter-attack and they go one or two points up. Then they release their forwards at the forward line. Aaron Doherty goes inside, Christopher Cook goes inside. And it's almost as if you know, we can see nothing early doors and then we start releasing it. They score a lot of goals, Charlie. Yeah. Four goals yesterday, yeah. three goals against Bunkrana. Yeah, that's right. I think three or four of the previous yeah. game against Bunkrana. Yeah. That's because of the running power they have and Aaron Doherty pulling the strings for them. So, um, look, they're facing a big, tough opponent in Dunlow. Mm. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing going to be easy there. So, But yeah, you feel... I think tradition is big. I think that's a big card for them. I think they want to get back to senior football. Kilcar, Kilo Beggs are either side of them playing football at that level. So it's going to be a big final, Charlie. Absolutely. Big final. Don Low 11, Terraman 7. We sort of anticipated it might be a low scoring game, John. Uh, Chris has some very interesting stats there, Chris, you might give them to us in terms of shots on target and all that sort of stuff. I suppose, Charlie, I've done this just in terms of like, you know. People saying, like, we spoke about Aru, you know, and setting up defensively and stuff. But just interesting, you know, Terman got a lot of stick out of Saturday night and even reading reports and stuff and, and the, across the media today. Like, people are, you know, have have their certain opinions on Terman. But if you look at the overall picture, they were beaten 11-7. Terman actually had more shots. For, first half, they had nine shots to Dunlow six. And by full time, that was 20-17. to 17. So, really... Of those missed shots as well, five of them were dropped under the keeper's hands. So you you would have to look at their shot conversion. Just doing a quick bit of percentages, they converted thirty eight percent of their of their shots. And can I step in here now, Charlie, <laughs> and say that Chris should rip up his staff and throw <laughs> them in the bin. The reality here, Chris, is that welcome to the podcast, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 in the first half, in the first half, on Dunlow's kick out. Did Terman contest the Dunlow kick out? No. Not once. No. The whole team ran back behind the 45. Yeah. Now tell me how you're going to win a game doing that there. What What's the plan to dispossess, dispossess Dunlow inside your 45 and the whole team run up the field like rugby league? Yeah. I, I've never seen it happen, Charlie. Jim McGuinness tried it in 2011. It nearly worked for... He developed the game, Charlie. That, that thing is redundant. Darren McDade took a free kick in the first half, maybe 35 yards out. There wasn't one Terman player between him and the posts. He kicked it straight. He kicked it a drop shot to Danny Rogers. Now, at under 10, Charlie, I'm coaching St. Junior's under 10s. If we had a free, I would make sure there's two men on the six-yard box in case mm -hmm. it drops short. Someone might punch it in. Small it's basic, parallelogram. Well, a small parallelogram, Charlie. Yeah. We've seen it. You know, a small thing. I don't know. Mm. I just, like, so tell me them stats, Chris, is fine, but I don't know how Terman expected to win the game when they don't contest it or no kick it. What are they afraid of if they're no? No, but, what, uh, what no, but on the thing about it, like, like I mean, we spoke there about, like, Conor Cunningham and, and Kilcairn, how you're, you're setting up. I mean, had they been more economical with those shots, they would have won the football match. 
Well, that's uh, you know, went you know, and, and, ba- and bad, bad and all as the setup may look or may be, and again, the same with Irua on on Saturday. You know, people say they they might have been more adventurous. They had a chance with the last kick of the game. Uh, Irua, this is they won it. To, to either yeah, one it or to or force, force extra time. time. That kick yeah. of the ball goes the other way. Again, nobody really cares how they've set up. The same now, and again, I go back to the. But Herman never, Herman never looked like one in that game. They were behind the whole game. I was at it and I watched it closely. Like they were behind the whole game. Now, I know Dunno came up in the first three shots were three mighty points from out mm. the field mm. that they Calvary probably you know yeah. they, they were tremendous points, mm. you know. But Danny, Danny, Herman, put, your, put your manager's head right. on there now. Put your manager's <laughs> head on. Go on. Right, to give it a bit of balance, right? The first thing any manager has the right to do is to set his team up the way he feels suits that group of players, right? Yes. So I am assuming that Francie Friel and Johnny McGinley, who are the joint management team there, would have looked at every possible way of playing the game and decided that this was the best way for them to play, right? We may not like it. Other people may not like it. That's not that's irrelevant to them. Mm. So what they have, their game plan is basically to be strong defensively. Now, Francie may feel he doesn't have a team to play a different style of play. Right, if you think about that team when it started to grow, it was in Division One, a young team, probably too young. We said that at the yeah, time, too young. That maybe they discarded some of the senior players too quickly and went with these young lads based off that couple of minor teams they had. When they went into Division One, to survive in Division One with that team, you have to play defensive. You had to try and stay in games. Right. The unfortunate thing for them is they've continued with that trend, even though they're maybe two years older now. I felt going into the game with the forwards they have, with Enda McCormick, Dara McDade and Bobby McGettigan, I thought there was an opportunity to change their way of playing. But very few managers will change their style of play mid-season. mid-season. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the big thing for Terman was if his players believed in his system, then it's an, it's an easy sell. If the players weren't happy playing that, then that's a difficult sell. And they'd look like a team at times on Saturday night that didn't enjoy playing the style of play that they've been asked to play. But as Chris said, had they converted, I mean, they had three frees in that first mm. 15, 20 minutes mm. that I felt they missed because, I'm not saying their legs were gone, but the men that Darren McDade had two of them, but Darren McDade spent most of his time in behind the 45. Yeah. If one of the best, if not the best forward in intermediate football. The night they played us in the championship, Darren McDade was superb. Mm. And they played open, they played a wee bit more open that night. Maybe they, they didn't respect us as much as they respect the likes of Dunlow, but they played a different, you were there, Charlie, they played yeah, a different was, type yeah, of game yeah, that yeah. night. Yeah, they did. So, I think there's a balance to be got. I think you can play... Most teams play defensive football, Charlie. Most people get men behind the ball, but very few get 15 behind the ball. Yeah. And Terman do put 15 behind the ball a lot. And you need to win games if you're doing that. And they still had 20, 20 shots on goals, Chris. Yeah. Well, some, well, of, them well weren't, some of them weren't great shots. Know, some of them Chris, they were, they, they, like, they were... In the second half of 10 minutes ago, it was 10 points to four. The game was over. Gone, I don't yeah. know. We're, yeah. we're, we're like that. Yeah. You know, so I know what you're saying, Chris, but... Uh, just, I was very you couldn't see them at any stage one in the absolutely game absolutely not Charlie. I couldn't see it not the way they were playing I just didn't see it I thought well, Dunlow were too, yeah, too to well be, to be fair to Dunlow of well. the two teams two, well, of the two teams Dunlow went out to win the game Yeah, Terman yeah. went out to stay in the game yeah. and that's a different mentality and like I would give huge credit to Dunlow yeah. on the night you know they faced into that 15 man defence at times the first three scores they kicked were from the exact same spot mm-hmm. out on the left hand side Carol McGee then Oshie Borner twice then they got a free to go 4 0 up. Mm. Then Terman got the next three scores in the game to go to 4 3. And then, as you say, Chris, that game plan is working now because mm-hmm. they turned the low over a lot in the last 10 minutes of the first half. But the low came out in the second half and obviously, under instruction from management, keep the ball out of contact, play the ball up the wings, find the players going in behind. Young Carl McGee came up twice on the uh, left hand yeah, side, kicked two yeah, points. Yeah. Yeah. So Dunlow deserve all the credit in terms Absolutely. of breaking so that, that down. That four points they got at the start was the one in margin in the end, yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. You know. Because against a different it. team, that it was a seven, seven, seven each after that, Chris. You know, yeah. Seven each match yeah. after that. Yeah, yeah. You know? And you know the thing about it too, like you know, they, they've been working now. Like you know, we're into the month of September. Most teams on the go now from kind of Christmas time. They've been working on a system for that number of months to change that in a week. Yeah, it just is not going to happen. No matter how much we would like this way to play or that way to play, no manager or no coach is going to rip up the whole entire blueprint within a week and go, right, guys, we're going to appear now trend on Tuesday night and here's what we're doing. Because yeah. that just so- sends the whole thing out of kilter then because you've been doing something uh, and it just because you know, you just, you're doing it and you're doing it and you're doing it to turn up then on Tuesday night and throw the whole thing in the yeah. bin. There's nobody going to do and that. And the reason Terman are getting the criticism they're getting is because three, four years ago, a lot of teams are doing this. 
Yeah, but now they're almost the exception to the rule. Themselves are probably here about Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is definitely mixing the game up. They're leaving men inside, particularly the big man at full forward has come back into the game. Yeah. And Terman had that option in Bobby McGettigan. Bobby McGettigan played county under 20 at full forward. Mm-hmm. And he, he scored came on a brilliant field. goal against yeah. Roland. And he Celtic came on the field yeah. with five minutes to go in the semi finals of media championship. Mm. That was, pro- and I don't think he was injured during America for the summer. So why did Terman not decide with 15, 20 minutes to go? Throw him to in there. Put him in. And it doesn't mean he'd won the game for them, but it drags the low players back. And then you can allow your runners to go. But Dun- Terman had to run through the whole low team to, mm. to get scores. Yeah. Whereas if they had Bobby inside and Dara inside and end in front of that, that's occupying three Dunlow defenders plus Jared Walsh, uh, who always plays as their sweeper. So then if the likes of Stephen Black in particular, or Colin Black, step inside their man the half back line, they're gone. Yeah. And then you're up and then you've got a chance to create to yeah. create problems. But listen, that's that's, that's what they decided. So. so listen, it's uh, it's uh Dunlow, Neve Columba final in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, just a final point on it, John. The best two teams in what's been a competitive intermediate championship through to the final. Absolutely, and as what Danny was saying, very impressed with Dunlow, Charlie. You know, on, on Saturday night I thought Teddy Gallant had them very well set up. You could see they knew what they were doing, you know, trying to execute it and, and did it for a lot a lot of the time. Uh Danny Rogers and Gold, uh, you know, good keeper, good big kick out. Now when Getting back when Terman pushed up in the kicker, they got a lot of joy out of it, which mm. you know mm. is more frustrating mm. than mm. conceding yeah. it all. But anyway, going back to the intermediate final, Cherry, don't know last year should have won it, Cherry, the first day in O'Donnell Park. So they're coming in with a lot of hurt and they're mm. probably coming back this year thinking we're going to right the wrongs of last year and they're back in the final and they've and the, and they're playing well, Charlie. Mm. So it's gonna be an interesting <laughs> game. Like Neve Columbia aren't gonna have it all their own way. No, <coughs> well, if anyone thinks that, you know, we'll, the, we'll talk about yeah. it next week because it's, it's two weeks to that final now. Intermediate B Championship semi finals, Convoy beat Terman by one ten to one eight. Neve Columba had it in two nine to six points victory. So Neve Columba and St Mary's from Convoy in Intermediate B Championship. Intermediate to Championship relegation playoffs yesterday. Uh, good results for the Any Shown teams. Uh, Burt beat Neve Breed 9 5. Mallon beat Convoy 10 7. Not high scoring games, you'd have to say. That means Neve Breed and Convoy will now play off, and the losers of that will go to junior football. Junior A Championship, Chris, you were in Cairndonna to see them beat Doris, 1-10 to 1-8. They're going to take on, who are they? They're going to play Neve Ulton in the semi-finals and Narossa beat St. Unans, 3-10 to 1-10. They're going to play Letterkenny Gales. Cairndonna, potential winners? Yeah, definitely. I mean, what they do have, they have the best player in the junior championship in Conor O'Donnell. Um, they held him in reserve on, on Saturday. Um, they took him in with about 16, 17 minutes to go on and, and he won the game for them. That's what they took him on to do. They took him on to win the game. It was cagey stuff. It was real 50-50 game. And I was talking actually to one of the Uris guys at half time, and I was just sort of saying, you know, what was the feeling down here about this game? And he, the, the words he said, it's throw a blanket over the two teams, he says, until Connor O'Donnell steps in the field. Mm-hmm. And that is exactly what happened. When Connor stepped in the field, Charlie, every single other player in the Cairndonna team just lifted the game. It was as if everybody had just got an injection of something when he came on. You know, I'm not like they're certainly not a one man team. I mean, Ryan Kelly got a great goal. You look at the likes of Danny Monigle, Fergal Doherty at big games for them, but Connor just gives them Charlie so That's so right. much. I mean, he's a senior mm. inter county footballer, yeah, yeah. going to play in the junior championship and it was it was no surprise they got and they got over the line quite impressively in that last 15 minutes or so. And as I said, they'll play Neve Ulton in the semi finals. Uh, Narossa, <coughs> Danny, 3 10 to 1 10 over St. Unans. Narossa, there, thereabouts? Yeah, they are, Charlie, because I, I would know that Narossa team fairly well. We, we beat them in the promotion playoff to get to Division 2, and we had a humdinger of a game with them over and down low. Um, they have a lot of pace. They have a lot of, like Killian Boner, I think he's Declan's son inside. He's yeah. a good He scored 1 4 against St. Unans. Christian Boner, they have Oshin Caulfield, County under 20. They have plenty of steel. Johnny Bourne used to play for right, Neil Connell. Yeah, Connell, yeah, yeah Big yeah. Malloy in the middle of the field. So they have a mixture of experience, youth, and they play with an edge. You mm. know, they, that's how the Ross play. They play with all the intensity in the world. And on paper, when when I looked at two fifteens on paper, I felt Unions had a big shout. Yeah. But they don't have that cohesion of training no. week in, week out. And mm. Mm. look, I would say for clubs in the junior championship, they're probably quite glad that Unions weren't able to come in and win a junior championship without having that cohesive approach yeah. to it you know so yeah. they're also by all accounts deserve to win it so um, 
they'll, they'll be dangerous uh, against Larry Kenny Gales. That's going to be a tough semi final. Larry Kenny Gales under a wee bit of pressure, John, after what happened last year. But uh, as Danny says, that Narossa, I was at that game, they, those two clubs played in Glen Swally. Mm, you were there cracking, that day as well, yeah. Chris. Yeah, it was only pointed. Yeah, it was yeah, only yeah, a point. Yeah, that was yeah. a cracker of a game, you know. Yeah. And Larry Kenny left Gales. Behind them, Charlie, didn't they did, they? they did, absolutely. No well, question the, pa- about the, pa- the Pacers are always on the Gales, like, yeah. let's be honest. Because like, yeah. you know, they are mm. the Division the, 2 yeah. team. The Division 2 team, and they have yet to win the Junior Championship. They've been round knocking on the door long enough now. So, you know, they need to get it. Well, you can say the same about all them teams, but the Gales have, as you say, they're a Division 2 team, so they're, they're, on paper they're the favourites, definitely, so they yeah. have to deliver some time, Charlie. Underperformed, and underperformed in the final. Was, yeah. was, there a, was there a tasty encounter between the Gales and the Ross in the, in the Championship already, up in the Rossa? Things only a point separate. Well, there might have been that draw, was it? Was it a draw or something? Yeah. No, there was a, yeah. I think so there was a bit of stuff on the sidelines and stuff, so it could be, yeah. it could be that same match. Yeah. Gales against Narossa, Neve uh, Alton against Karen Dunne, the two semi finals. Junior B Championship, Neve Alton are there as well. They take on Lifford, and uh, Neve Padraig from Muff take on Letterkenny Gales. So uh, Letterkenny Gales name popping up. C Championship, a uh, couple of good quarter finals. Lined up here, Glenn Swilly against Terman. That'll be a tasty one for sure. And McCoons against Dunlow, Leif Connell, and again St. Unans are through to the semi finals there. Glenn Swilly, Terman, John. That'll be a good one to go to. Third, Cherry Dad's army. The <laughs> 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 boys, boys were walking sticks and crutches on the feet. I wouldn't say, I was good cracked. No, Cherry, that's. that's uh, it's what I would call recreational football. It's not too serious, but it's good. Yeah. So listen, it's, it's boys playing in thirds. Yeah. And it's our fourth team, so it's a bit of crack, but uh, no. When's that no, on this weekend? It's uh, all going to crack till it gets to the uh, yeah. <laughs> finals. You know, there's, there's a few there's boys playing in their matches, John. They don't no, play for the no, crack of it, you know. That's true. Chris, ladies, it's, it's Terman Glen Fun into the final again. Terman beating Neve Connell 211 to 17 and Glen Fun 414 to 112 over Moville. Same story again, two top clubs, and that's the way it's been, and that looks as if it's always going to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned Mavill there. I mean, Mavill are kind of decimated at the moment. They have five other girls in, in Liverpool and Blanard McLaughlin done her, done her cruciate recently That's as well. Right, so, yeah. like, that was going to be a difficult enough encounter for them. But you take those six players out of that. And, you know, recent years as well, the likes of Aoife McColgan has, has gone back to her home club, Mal, and stuff as well. So, you know, look, they're, they're, they're doing well to keep going. And you have to give credit to Neve Connell as well, who have come up from come up from intermediate. And they're giving senior going, not, not afraid to go up and, and test themselves because... Everybody, including them, know that Glenfinn and Terman are, are, are so far ahead. They are so mm. far ahead, but you, you know you have to give them credit for, for making that step up. And again, the, the two old rivals going to clash in that final. And no matter how many times those two teams play, Chris, it's always a cracker when they meet, isn't it? There's so much at stake, prides at stake, and you know both of them want to get the one over on the other. Never a dull moment. And you have so many big players. I mean, you have a couple of the best players in the country playing... On both sides, sides. Yeah, like you know, yeah, like, you look yeah. at the two the two forward lines. I mean, even look at like Geraldine and, and Yvonne. Like, I mean, what they've contributed to Donegal and to see them kind of going toe to toe and everything around them. Like, it does. It means so so much to them. And you know, there there's there's been so many big games to between them between league championship guilt. Like, no matter what they play in, they always end up meeting. And and no matter what's on the line, it always. You know they'll they'll just give it absolutely everything, and it makes for makes for another cracking final. The final that's going to be on the first weekend in October. That final, the intermediate final is uh, Aru against Ardra. Aru beat Nivora uh, yesterday four thirteen to two eight, and Ardra had a one fourteen to one twelve victory over Fanet Gales. In the Ladies Shield uh, semi final is the senior St Nauls beat Bonkrana three twelve to two fourteen. That's a cracker, that one. They'll play St. Unans in the Shield final. And the Junior B Shield final is between Red Hughes and Terman. And the Junior A Shield final, Oris against Four Masters. And a couple of other ones just that are on next week. The Ladies Junior A final, Dunlow, who the ladies teams are doing very, very well, taking on Gidor. And the Ladies Junior B's, Neve Padraig Muff, taking on A. Ruiz, second team as well. Loads of football, guys. It's great to see it. But uh, we were saying earlier on, just to finish off, it's been so congested. Is it is it fair on players? Is it fair on the four counties or the sorry the four teams playing in the semi finals that they, they don't get a week to take a breather, John? Well, Charlie, I was under the impression that our schedule was like when the county board plan out the, the CCC plan out the schedule, they're working back two weeks from the Ulster Club, so you have to have your team ready for the Ulster Club. And I I don't know where I got this, but it, it was in my head that Danny go were in the preliminary round this year in Ulster, so that's why we had to finish up. So soon, but I've discovered today when I looked online that we're not. No, it's five weeks from the county final to the first four or five, five weeks, weeks five to weeks. the first round of which, which is is a bit strange, Charlie, to mm. say the mm. least. And I'm surprised, and I don't know whether it's a bit of a boo boo 
on the CC. But now they could come up with a they probably say maybe have a replay or something. So I'm not going to go too hard on Cherry, but it, is, it seems a wee bit rushed. But I yeah. thought it was rushed for a reason. And I was saying, why didn't they start it two weeks earlier? If it was such a rush, you know, start the championship yeah, two yeah. weeks earlier than that impacts in the league or whatever. But it's a wee bit rushed, Jerry. I was surprised with that five week gap. So, same so, on the intermediate. Yeah. Like, they, like, they're out the same week, so they have actually a six week gap because ah, yeah. the intermediate final is going to be the, the week. Mm-hmm. The taking break? I always thought that you should take breaks between the quarter final. And the semi final and the semi final and the final. Just you, yeah, when, when you the calendar when the calendar permits it, it definitely. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, you know, we always kind of you know the week on week and we accept that. But when the calendar allowed this, you, you know, the, yeah. they, they should have given the, the players yeah. and the team. And yeah. even Charlie, for people that are you know, if you were trying to watch games this weekend, I mean, God, the schedule would oh, be absolutely crazy. relentless. Just on the schedule from a manager's point of view, we we played the intermediate championship four weeks in succession, yes. right? And I know that's the schedule, and I'm not being critical of the CCC. But from a player welfare point of view, we had mm-hmm. players who were carried knocks from week to week. We couldn't train. There were two or three of our lads could not train during the week. We we're just making sure they were able to play the 60 minutes of the yeah. weekend. Yeah. That's not ideal. And I think particularly this week, coming off the quarterfinals of the Senior Championship, For sure. between profiling the game, getting people yeah. to chat about the yeah. game, yeah. build a bit of excitement around the county, yeah. we've gone from quarterfinal to semi-final in the space of seven days. Drop of a hat just, yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. that space could have been afforded, especially with the five-week gap. Yeah. Play your four weeks, all right, take a break for quarterfinal, take a break at semi-final, break into the final. I mean, five weeks of big gap, even it's made it one or two weeks, yeah. six weeks, mm. they'll mm. end up playing challenge matches, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, well, of course. Mm. Too and you won't get challenge matches because... Every yeah, other club is out. Yeah, who are you going to play? That you know you're yeah. playing. Listen, teams. boys, we can't right. complain because the good no. thing about it, he gives us plenty to chat about here on a Monday. <laughs> give out about a lot, of, and to give out about and a lot of stuff that people would say we shouldn't be talking about at all. But anyway, uh, we're going to leave it there for today. Thanks to uh, Danny and John as usual, and to Chris McNulty. Great to have him back in the studio with us now, working of course for the Donegal Democrat and Donegal Live, and uh, a new manager and editor for you, our good friend Jeremy Doherty. Uh, I'm sure everybody delighted with that that appointment, Chris. Yeah, absolutely, Jermyn's a good guy and, you know, no better man, a safe, steady pair of hands to, to lead the ship and a, a good, ambitious person to, to be guiding us now into the into the next period. And I'm sad to say I'm old enough to remember him starting as a journalist many, many, it's over 30 years ago now. The twoies are Spurs fans too, Charlie. We are, you know we, that are, are we share that as well. Yeah, yeah, and they're going well at the moment as well. Thanks to Tommy Conway here at uh, Full Tilt Studios where we record this programme every week. So from myself, Charlie Collins and the team and everyone at Donegal Daily and Donegal Sports Hub, have a good week. The Donegal Sports Hub, Donegal Daily Championship Podcast.